I have addressed this question before in, in about 15 to 20 minutes video where I was explaining how to turn your study gap into a blessing. Go to that YouTube channel, look for that video, watch it, it's going to actually help you, okay? Thank you. So, where are those counting? Let's go to the next question. Hello. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to my live session. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> okay, so today I want us to discuss the hottest study abroad questions and answers. All right, so I'll be looking at the questions that you have and I will be answering them. And if you are watching this as a replay, just sit tight and look at what questions other people had and the answers they got. All right. Yeah! <laughs> if if this is interesting to you, I'm sure you're going to stay. But very very important, very very important because sometimes what 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 actually happens is that um sometimes what actually happens is that you know you have questions you may not even know you have questions until somebody asks the question you be like oh no it's true that question has been on my mind so questions are important. This is why we also go the extra mile to answer them. Answer them, answer them, answer them. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Woo! Okay, good. So let's see. What study abroad question do you have? And like, what is that study abroad question that in your mind you've, you know, you've always had it and you're like, I wish somebody can just help me answer this question. You know, that can happen to me sometimes where I'll just be like, oh my God, I have this question. I wish there's somebody that would just answer it for me, especially in, in, in journeys that I want to take in life, you know? Uh, like in my own way, in, in, whether it is, you know, business or when I was even trying to travel abroad like you. And, um, you know, sometimes, for example, let me give you an example. I remember when one of the things that were in my mind is, what country should I really travel to? Which one is going to be the easiest? I don't know how their programs are. I just wish somebody is going to tell me the country to travel to. Thank God there was somebody that guided me on that at that point. There were times I was like, okay, what course should I really study? You know? Uh, okay, how am I really even going to get this scholarship? Or even before we got there, there was even time when I was like, should I travel at all? Should I travel or should I just stay back, you know, and try to write my... Uh, exams and uh, and practice in, uh, with my dentistry in my country. People will tell me that. Some people will say, ah, your your course is very lucrative, right? So there were times I had that in like, should I even travel? I don't know. You know? <laughs> should I travel? So there were times I had different kinds of questions. There were times I had, should I write a year test? Should I write gym? Believe it or not, there were times I didn't know the answers to this question. You know, so I just want you to know that irrespective of what your question is, don't think that it's stupid. Don't think that it's stupid. It's better for you to ask, clarify, and then you move on. There is no stupid question, right? There's no stupid question. So as as I'm going to try and answer like all the questions that come as as possible. At least if I can answer like twenty questions, then we can go. And let's see. Who is going to help me keep count? If I answer one question, you will say, I've answered 19. And you, ca you can count down, like, 20, 19, 18, 17, you know? So I want to answer 20 questions today. And when we answer the 20 questions, we are going to take a break and call it a day. All right? I will call your name. I will read out your question. And then I'm going to provide answers to you. Write your question now. So that at least your question become one of the 20 I'm going to answer. Let's see who, who we, first of all, who will volunteer to keep count for me? We can just get like five people. So if I answer one question, you will say 20. If I answer the next one, you say 90. So that I, I will be seeing your comment. That way it will help me keep count. Somebody say I'm counting. Let's see who is counting. Sandra is counting. Thank you so much, Sandra. Who else is going to count for me? Who else is going to count for me? Please volunteer to count for me, all right? Who is going to count for me? Hi, Paulette. Thank you so much for joining. Hi, Chidi. Thank you for joining. Um, please, who is going to count for me? Who is going to count for me? I'm looking for volunteers. 
Empress Danny, thank you, thank you. So how Sandra is going to be counting, Empress Danny is going to be counting, Netu Martins is going to be counting. Yes, Sandra, I've already counted you, so three. Uju Gold is going to be counting. Whoa, yes, yes. One more, one more, one more, one more, one more person. Let's see. Let's see, let's see who's going to be counting. Lillian, you won't have. Thank you so much. Yes, would you go? I've already recognized you. Then we have Faith Abraham. Thank you so much. So please count for me. Like, if I, the first, if I answer the first question, 20. If I answer the next one, 19. 18. We we'll count until we reach 1. Then we reach 0. Once you start typing 0, I know that it is time to round up. Woo! This is going to be fun. Huh? <laughs> okay, let's start with... um. And most times, eh, I'm going to take questions that I see that the answer is going to apply to a lot of people. Let's see who has the first question. Let me see. Let me see. I'm still looking for the first question that I'm going to answer. Thank you. Uh, Gloria Uloka is saying, always learning from, from uh, always learning to have positive vibes from you. Thank you so much. Gideon Emeka Igodalo. Thank you so much. Okay, so my first question today is from Desmond Samuel. And he said, uh, I have graduated more than 15 years now. Can I still run masters abroad? So, uh, Desmond is asking that he has, practically has 15 years study gap. Can he do his masters abroad? And the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Why? So, study abroad, one, is not age sensitive. I mean, even if you are 40, even if you are 50, yes, you can do study abroad, right? It's not age sensitive because I know that if you graduated 50 years ago, that also means that you are probably in your late 30s now or you are even in your 40s, you know, or late 40s, something like that. Anyway, so first, understand that study abroad is not age sensitive this month, uh, but also this applies to any other person. So another thing for you to understand is that schools, try to high uh, try to um, schools try to admit students from diverse background all right they try to admit students from diverse background so that uh, so that you like in a class everybody is not thinking alike one of the ways they try to diversify their their admission process is they take people who graduated recently they also take people who graduated a long time ago to diversify the class why is this important? Many people who graduated a long time ago have what is called industry experience. Many of them are industry experts. Let me give you an example. Somebody that graduated today and they want to do HR. And somebody who probably has been doing HR for 10 years. Their knowledge, is it the same? The way they respond to questions in class, is it the same? No. They are even going to have something to add to what the lecturer is saying. Do you understand? Yes. So... You, as somebody who has been in the industry, you have what is called industry experience. And schools are looking for people like you to get you into that class, to create diversity. Now, the, what we break or what we make or my admission is your ability to show the admission committee that you have the industry experience. And how do you do this? You're going to do this with your CV and personal statements. So, if you are going to, if you need to use your CV and personal statement to show them, hey, I did not say go and write that, oh, I have industry experience. No, you will show them that you have industry experience. This is one of the things, this is one of the core foundation that we, tr we train people on, Advantage Scholarship School. We teach you how to prepare your CV so that when school sits, they can't wait to meet you. Same thing goes for your personal statement. So, just understand that, your, your, your 15 years can be a blessing and it can be a cause. If you go and make them understand that you've not been doing anything for 15 years, you've just been like this. Everybody will say, ah, wait till you learn, you don't forget her. But with your admission documents, you can show that you actually have something to offer to the class, including the newbies that will just be admitted. And they will drag you like gold. So, yes, you have graduated more than 15 years now. You can run your master's abroad. End of the answer to that question. This one, I hope you understood. All right? And I also say that, for example, on our YouTube channel, 
Dr. Linda Ihemi TV has Vantage Migration on YouTube. Go to that channel. You're going to see, we, I have addressed this question before in, in about 15 to 20 minutes video where I was explaining how to turn your study gap into a blessing. Go to that YouTube channel, look for that video, watch it, it's going to actually help you, okay? Thank you. So, what are those counting? Let's go to the next question. This question is from Fungui Venice. Fungui Venice, thank you so much. You said, how long does the entire study abroad process take? How long does it take? That's the question, right? So, I'm going to tell you that the answer to that question is that it varies, it varies, it varies. It depends on many things, but most importantly, it depends on the country, on the country. So, country like UK, the, the visa process is about two weeks old. Like, two weeks, you get your visa, right? But it also depends on when you started. Let's say uh, school is admitting people December, and you apply November. You can still get the admission and travel for January start. It may have taken you two months. Somebody else did that same application you did in December. Somebody did it in September. For that person, for that same admission you are resuming for, right? For that same admission process you are resuming for, they, it's going to take them about five months because they applied way earlier. Though the person who applied way earlier is likely to get scholarship more than the person who applied closer to that time, to the deadline, right? So... But this is, for example, UK, right? Sometimes you also see people apply to UK schools a year ahead. So it's not, it doesn't mean that because it's UK, it must going to, it's going to take you two weeks or two months. No, it, it depends on the country, but it also depends on when you start your process. Because you can start early for an admission process happening in six months. Somebody else can start one month before the deadline, right? Now, let's look at a country like Canada, all right? A country like Canada... A country like Canada, actually, the, the visa process as of today takes about three to four months, depending on the country. But let's say for a lot of African countries, three to four months. What that means is that generally, Canada is going to take it longer than UK to process, right? Then for a country like US, where they do interview, oral interview, most times, what the, it, it just depends on when you were able to get your, um, what they call it now, get your interview date you can be you can uh, you can get an interview date that is closer or further away so let me put it this way that a country like us is in between being is in between uk which is very fast and canada which is a bit slower right a lot of other countries fall into where you like they're not so fast they're not so slow so how long is, does the process take ideally i will want you i will advise you to start eight months to 12 months from the time you want to travel. That is my own advice. Because I've noticed that this gives you room. Do you know that uh, you can apply for your visa and the visa come back denied? But because you started early, you can reapply for your visa and the visa will not come out positive in such a way that you are still able to travel for the academic session. If you apply very close, that visa comes out denied. You don't have a choice but to wait for the next academic season. You see? So, as an educational consultant, I'm going to advise you to start 8 months to 12 months from the time you want to travel. So, for example, you want to travel September 2029. I want you to start at least around September 2028. Do you understand my point? Like, start a year before. That's simple. Start a year before. Start a year before. It doesn't mean that if you start late, you are not going to be able to. The answer is yes, 100%. 100%. As, now, let me tell you why. As a graduate from an English speaking country, or a graduate who studied in, who did their undergraduate studies in English, you are able to get schools in Canada that does not require you to submit any form of English test, be it TOEFL, be it CELP, be it IETS. Yeah, you are not required to submit this. And somebody wants to, ah, I went to the school website, I saw that you needed IETS. I'll say, Advantage Scholarships will train you on how to obtain IETS waiver, even when the school asks for it. All right, so the school may or may not ask for it, 
but you will be able to obtain a waiver. So, Shola, how your day? This answer is specifically for you, but also for any other person who is listening, who's the, who, who this question can apply to. Yes, you can get your admission in Canada, cheap school. We, we introduce you to software that even help you to get cheap schools. But you can get cheap school in Canada and you don't need IETS. 100%. 100%. Good news, right? <laughs> okay. Let's go to the next question. Okay. So the next question is from Gideon Emeka Igodaro. And he said, is travel history important in getting a student visa? Is travel history important in getting a student visa? The answer is no. Travel history is not important in getting student visa. I'll explain to you. If you have travel history, it just means that, like, if you have travel history, it means that somebody is going to look at it and say, wow, you've been traveling and going and coming back, right? It just, it's like a way, it's like, travel history, eh? How do I explain it now? It's like you going to look for jobs somewhere, and when you came, you were you 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 rode a very a nice car when you were coming, right? They will just be like, "Oh, this person is not hungry, but he's looking for a job." Okay, fine. It does not mean you will get the job. It does not mean you will not get the job either. It just means that it helps with the first impression, right? It helps with the first impression, but that's not what they don't. Nobody gives you a job because. You, you came for the job interview with a car. Neither will it be that, on the average, that somebody is going to deny you, like somebody will refuse to hire you because you did not come with a car. However, if you came with a car, it's, it's a good first impression. I'm just giving an example. So, if you have travel history, it, it, makes, a good, it makes a good first impression for your visa application. But it won't be the reason why your visa is granted or your visa is denied. Even a lot of people that they are going to say that, oh, they said I don't have travel history. It's like, look at how travel history can affect somebody. Let's say you have done one thing wrong, done the second thing wrong, done the third thing wrong, and you have not even traveled before. You see? So that's like, the person will say, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and this person has not traveled before. I'm not sure they will come back. You know that kind of thing? Not that that travel history was the main reason why your visa was denied. It will just be an adjunct in addition to all the other wrong things that you did. I've had clients over and over again. Most of our clients say they don't have travel history and they get their visa, be it US, be it Canada, be it UK, any country at all, they get their visa. What? Yeah, let, let me keep that answer short. So, it is good to have travel history, right? But it is not what makes the embassy approve or deny you your study visa. Yeah. I love travel history because I always promote uh, global citizenship. I want you to see the world. I want you to travel. It's good. But the main reason is not so that your study visa will be approved. Do you see the point? Thank you, Gideon, for that question. Who are those counting? What number are we in now? Let's go to the next question. Someone said, why, what, what, can, what can't you help somebody? I think the person wants to say, why can't you help someone who is going to study in a college abroad? Uh, well, that's not what, like, the question is ambiguous. What do you mean by somebody who is going to study in college? You can do a PGD in a college. You can do master's in a college, right? So that's not how to differentiate our service. We Vantage Migration, we have graduates. We don't work with undergraduates. You know the same way you are like a man and not a woman, or you're a woman and not a man. It's not that somebody will tell you, why are you a man, Seth? Why are you not a woman? Or why are you a woman? Why are you not a man? It's not sensible, right? You could just be like, uh -uh. I'm a woman because I'm a woman, or I'm a man because I'm a man. So don't say, why don't you help undergraduate? Just understand what we do and what we don't do. We help graduates who are going abroad to study. We do not work with undergraduates. Full stop. Don't ask us why we don't do this one or why we do this. Just understand what we do and what we don't do. 
All right, Alexander, thank you so much for your question. As we said, there's no stupid question. Ask it, ask it if it's your mind, ask it. Okay, the next question is from Onyeka Linda DK. So Onyeka is saying, can I do my postgraduate degree abroad with my HND results? Yes, you can. Yes, 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 yes. All the HND holders understand that, yes, you can do your postgraduate studies abroad. In, co in countries like uh, Canada, you can do postgraduate diploma. You can start from there. In countries like UK or US, you can go for master's direct. Yes, you can travel abroad and study abroad with HND results. Yes, 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 yes. Onyeka, I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Who are those counting? What number are we in now? We are counting down. And we are counting down from 20. What number are we in now? Type, type, type. Who are my counters? Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, we have a question from Julius Taylor. P. Taylor. He said, are there fully funded scholarship in Canada? 100% there are. There, I came to Canada on fully funded scholarship. I also got my P two PhD admission because I applied to only two schools, University of Toronto and University of Waterloo for my PhD, and I got the admission on scholarship. Yes, all right? So there are fully funded scholarship, but I must tell you, most times the scholarships are hidden. So you need to learn how to find the hidden scholarships. That is what we do, advantage migration. If you, are, if you are looking for fully funded scholarship, I will advise you to start with attending our free webinar at www.vantagemigration.ca. That's like the core of what we do. Show you how to get hidden scholarships, right? Even, there are different types of scholarships. You can get scholarship. You can get study loan as well. You can get invisible scholarship. You can get cheap tuition. Oh, the options are endless. Start by attending our free webinar at www.vantagemigration.ca. All right? Thank you. Now let's go to the next question. Count, 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 count. Okay. Uh, somebody is asking um, something about contacting a supervisor. The supervisor said apply. Um, I said, but did not request for interview. Like the first, the person is saying that the supervisor said you have to get admitted first or something. The the the, uh, the what you are giving to me right now. Uh, first of all, this is something that we we handle from A to Z. How to get supervisor? How to contact supervisor? How to get the contacts of supervisor? What to say to the supervisor? You know. How to be sure if a supervisor is hanging you, you want to be sure to know where exactly you are standing. How to know if a program is fully funded or not. You know, and many of those things, those are things that we, we take our time and handle. They are part of the curriculum of uh, Vantage Scholarship School. So, uh, uh, Precious, I advise you, advise you, instead of doing Timbom Timbom, I advise you to attend Vantage Scholarship School so that you will lead yourself you will lead yourself you won't be in that hanging place and of course i always say yeah once you have attended vantage scholarship school and you have any other question you just hit us an email whether you are contacting the course facilitators generally or you're contacting me directly whatever the case is and we're able to solve it for you so don't be at this stage where it's like you don't have anybody to run to because you are asking this question, but I'm seeing beyond the question. You're asking this question, I'm seeing beyond the question. Who is actually your travel abroad mentor? Precious. Who is your travel abroad mentor? Do you have one? When the going gets tough on this journey, who are you going to call? Because when you don't know what you are doing, supervisors are going to use you as marks. They are going to tell you to apply when admission comes. And they will, supervisors don't even talk like that. Usually they will tell like 10 people to do the same. When 10 of you apply, you will choose the best person and you were putting your hope there on him. I'm telling you, don't let a supervisor joke with your destiny because you yourself are not confident. 
You don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. You don't know how to recognize a yes from a maybe. Don't be like that. Please, don't joke with your dreams. Don't joke with your dreams. Okay. Okay, let's look at the next question. I'm looking for questions that when I answer them, they're actually um, going to apply to other people. Somebody said, this is from N. N. said, is software engineering a research-based course? There's no way for you to know until you go to the school website. And the same program, software engineering, can be a research-based course, can be a course-based course, can be a project-based course, can be, you know, it can be anything. It can be a PGD, it can be a PhD, it can be a master's. You don't just know. Top of your head. Just know. Go to the school website to read what is written there. That's how to know. You don't just know top of your head. Like they just say, is public. Is, the question you're asking me is like somebody is public health a, a research based program? How, how are you going to know? You don't just know by knowing. Right? That's not how. So, same thing I'm going to say. When I see people, who have like questions that I, I just feel like, oh, if only you can get trained, if only you can get trained, you will not be wasting time. You, you will move with the speed of light. You see? And then, please attend our free webinar at www.vantagemigration.ca and see some of the things you can get from there, okay? And if you have more questions, chat us inbox. Yeah, our inbox is always open. Thank you so much, everyone. Let's see. Let's see more questions. I'm, I'm looking for the question. Somebody, uh, Gazi said, I have a second class upper in, in my undergraduate studies, but I want to go for a postgraduate diploma. Is it possible to get scholarship for that? So um, postgraduate diplomas are not likely to be automatically funded, but there are other ways to fund it. From invisible scholarship to departmental scholarship to, um, yeah, those are the other ways. So, the other ways to fund it, but I will just wonder why have you, like, see what you're doing? It's like from the word go, you want to do PGD. Why do you want to do PGD? Like, is there something in the PGD that you want to do? In, people with PhD can even do PGD. That's, so, it's not about PGD is a small course, no. But, like, I'm curious. What is it that made you say you want to do PGD? Not even PGD is something. You want to do PGD. Is this something master's is doing to you? Are you feeling you cannot get master's admission? That, that would not be correct. Do you get? If you are looking for scholarship, is there a reason you are not applying to fully funded programs? Could it be because you don't know how to find them? You understand my question? I'm, I'm trying to... My brain is put into... What is it exactly... Is making you want to go for PGD. I want to query that thing. I want to query it. What? what? I, I, I will feel that it's because you have limited information. Limited information on how to go about your travel abroad process. Limited information on how to go about your study abroad process. You don't know what to do. And for what you're even saying, it's not as if you even have a low grade or anything. By the way, somebody with first class can go for PGD. I also, I want to clarify that so that you don't take the answer out of context. But like, it's like, after I you want to go for PGD, what happened? That's what I want to find out. I, I feel that your challenge is the challenge of somebody with limited information. Because you want to go for PGD, but you also want scholarship. But there are also programs that may not necessarily be PGD, but they are, they are fully funded. So if you want scholarship, why are you not going for those? What is keeping you? Is it the knowledge on how to approach it? Or... You know, I want to find out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ngozi. I hope uh, that, that answered your question. Let's see. Again, I'm going to say that uh, if you're listening to me right now and you're advantage migration clients, please... All your questions, big, small, quarter, medium size, 
fat, sleep, all your questions. Chat with us where you chatted when you register for the training. I will tell you what to do next. It's like, don't be the daughter of a king and you are still begging for a seed of rice. Okay? Don't be the daughter of a king or son of a king. Don't be a prince or princess and you are still begging for seed of rice. Chat us. We offer free consultation to our past clients. So, why would you be somewhere clamoring for your question to be answered when you could ask the question, we could get on a phone call with you, we could get on a Zoom call with you, we could get on a WhatsApp call with you? Why would you want to do that? Receive sense. Receive sense, okay? Let's see. I'm looking for questions that when I answer them, I, 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 I like it will affect everybody. So we have questions from Pauline. Pauline is saying, I would like to study in Canada for a master's in special education. Do I require English proficiency? How would you assist? You do not require English proficiency. I said, I answered that before on this, my platform, but uh, if you are from an English speaking country or you studied in English, you studied in English for your postgraduate studies. You do not need, you do not need English proficiency exam, okay? And even if this will ask for it, we teach you how to get the waiver. So, Pauline, go to attend our free webinar. That's how to know how to get started. Go to www.advantagemigration.ca. If you don't remember the link, ask us in the comment section what's the link to the webinar, or just chat us inbox. I say, what's the link to the webinar? We'll be able to give you the link, okay? www.vaticmigration.ca. Uh, before I continue, I want to specially welcome Princess Annabelle Grigory. Grig Grigory. Sorry. Princess Annabelle, thank you so much. She She's saying that she's a first time viewer. And what's this page about? So, my name is Dr. Linda Iheme. I'm an educational consultant with Vantage Migration. All right? Myself and my team, we train graduates who want to relocate abroad on how to do that successfully via the study abroad route. We teach you how to get admission, how to get scholarship, how to get study loan, or any other challenge that you have on this journey. That's what we do. So, uh, for all those who are first timers on my page, for all those who are first timers, I advise you, one, to look at all the posts that we have done before you join this page. Look at the previous posts. That will help you to understand what exactly that we do. And if you have questions, feel free, chat us inbox. I will be very happy to assist you, all right? Welcome to my page. Yeah! <laughs> uh, then we have uh, Jay. Jay said, how can I get in touch with you? Good! First thing first, I will say you can chat us inbox. So if you go to my page, whether it's uh, Facebook, Instagram, you are going to see the message from message button just at the description of the page. Chat, click on it, chat us inbox. If you don't know how to get it, you can comment and say, um, uh, I don't know where the message button is. Can somebody direct me and I will be able to give you more direction. So chat us inbox. That is the easiest way for you to for you to get in touch with me. Chat us inbox. Easiest, fastest way. Chat us inbox. Okay. Thank you. So I have another question uh, from. Let's see. I have another question from someone who said, "Oh, I've attended your webinar." And uh, I have attended your webinar and I have a question, okay, from Samuel. I've attended your webinar and I have a question. What is the best place to ask you? The best place for you to ask us is to chat us inbox. Chat us inbox on our Facebook, Dr. Linda Iheme, you know, the, uh, Facebook or, or on Instagram at Dr. Linda Iheme. Instagram is a verified account. So chat us inbox there so that we can answer your question. Even check the group. The, the, the social media description, you're going to see my contact details. Once you go to the home page, check the, you're going to see the, my contact details. You can always use any of those. So, chat us inbox, okay? If, if you have attended our webinar, you have more questions, chat us inbox. Don't chat on the page. 
Don't chat on the page. Chat us inbox. That's the only way to assure yourself that we are going to answer your question. All right? Let's see. More questions. More questions. More questions. Uh, Adeyemi said, can I have a fully funded scholarship with a two, with a second class offer? If yes, please assist me with the procedure. First, you can have a fully funded scholarship irrespective of your grade, depending on the type of scholarship you're applying for. They are scholarship for different people. I've had people who had, like, for example, two, two, they applied for scholarship, they got partial funding, they negotiated with the school, they, they got another funding that covered it up and it became full scholarship for them. So, you, is, is that you have two two is not the only reason why you get scholarship. You just have to learn how it works. Again, I will say go to our free webinar to learn more. Go to www.vantagemigration.ca or check us in Boston. We'll give you the link. All right. Thank you, Adeyemi. Let's see more questions. Your questions. If you have questions, well, well, uh, let's see. Do you know that some people, even their question has already been answered, but maybe because they came late. And hey, somebody said, "Is it only Nigerians you help, or you help people outside Nigeria?" We help any graduate who is English, who is from an English-speaking country. Any graduate who is from an English-speaking country. Why? Because uh, our facilitators and myself, English, that is the main language that we speak. For example, if you, if you understand French only, we can't help you right now. Not because you cannot travel abroad, but because I don't speak French. Tu parler français? I don't know if that's correct. But I don't speak French. <laughs> I don't speak French. Like, I don't know how to speak French. I'm still managing to learn the bonsoir, mademoiselle, and... Uh, and uh au revoir and uh you know i'm still learning all this muscle, but i don't speak french <laughs> because i don't speak french if you speak only french we are not able to assist you sorry our because of our own limitation but once you graduate and you're from an english-speaking country whether you are from sierra Leone, rwanda tanzania ghana cameroon nigeria liberia you know, <laughs> Uganda, uh, Kenya, Zambia, whether, uh, provided you are from an English speaking country, Vantage Migration helps you and can help you. If you also check a lot of our testimonial from what we posted, you see people from different countries. So, yes, of course, if you are from Nigeria, we help you as well. <laughs> I'm originally from Nigeria, but it does not mean that we work with only Nigerians. I've had clients from uh, Venezuela. I've had clients from Jamaica. Yeah, I've had clients from um, uh, even in some um, some South American countries as well. I not. I have. Oh, let, let, let me tell you more. I've also had clients from Canada, from US, from UK. Do you know why? Sometimes. You are in Canada, for example, but you want to study and you don't know how to get scholarship. We can still help you. Sometimes you are in the U.S. You want to migrate to Canada or you want to even get scholarship in the U.S. school. We can still help you. But most times you are in the U.K., but you want to come to Canada or come to the U.S. or get fully funded scholarship while you are in the U.K. We can still help you. So the criteria for being able to work with us is that you must be a graduate and you must speak English. Full stop. Your country, we don't care about it. Like, irrespective of the country where you are from or the country you want to go to. Even if you want to remain in your current country, like I said, let's say I've had people, they're in Canada already, they want to just get scholarship. I, and not just that, we've had people take the training. We've had people who came to Canada, for example, as permanent residents, they want to do ad get admission on full scholarship. They took our training and they be were able to get their admission. So, Again, the criteria to work with Vantage Migration is that you must be at least a graduate and you must speak English. That's it. All right? Okay. Um, 
So I have another question. That other question was from Charles. Thank you so much. Uh, we have another question from Juliet Destiny. Juliet Destiny said, Good day, uh, Dr. Please, is it possible to get a postgraduate admission when you already have one or more courses? When you already have one for another course, yes, it's possible. You can get multiple admission. By the way, you should get multiple admission. Most people who go through Vantage Scholarship School get multiple admission and then they choose. That is the position we want you to be in. Not for you to apply to one school and be praying, oh, please let them admit me. No! You're supposed to get multiple admissions and then you become the chooser, right? <laughs> Because you're not a beggar, you're an expatriate. So expatriates, they have choice. Beggars are not choosers, right? But expatriates, they have choice. <laughs> okay. Let's see questions. How many questions left? Who are those counting? Okay, so uh, somebody asked a question from Sandra, said, Someone told me that IETS is needed when applying for visa. Even when the college you are, we are going to exempted it or waived it for you. How true is it? I'll tell you, the simple answer is false. But I'm going to tell you why the person said that. The person said that because they are cramming. They are not understanding. They are cramming. They are not understanding. You see the difference? They are cramming and they are not understanding. Now, let me tell you. Two reasons why the person would have said so. You remember when I told you that we handle graduates who study who speak English, right? Because we handle graduates who speak English, if you are a graduate who speaks English and you did your undergraduate studies in English, you get English test waiver. If you are not, let's say you are from English speaking country, but you are going for BSc, you are going for uh, diploma program, you have not done your undergraduate studies in English, you're going to need that yet, yes. My advice is for graduates who speak English. So, if you're a graduate who speak English, understand it that there is a difference. I always want people to understand because when you understand, it's easier for you not to cram. If you cram, when the situation comes, it will just blow you off. If you're an undergraduate and you're going for diploma, you just have your uh, secondary school living certificate. Embassy will ask you for English test. Right? Even though you may be from an English speaking country. So if you're from an English speaking country, and at least you have three years of study in your home country, as like in an English speaking uh, school, you do not need English test. Also, even if you are a French speaking person, but you understand English, and you studied in English, you don't need English test. I'll give you more examples. Somebody from Cameroon, for example, the country speaks French and English, may even be from the French part, but maybe they studied in English. Maybe they did their undergraduate in English. They will not need English test. Even if the school or embassy ask for it, they are going to get a waiver. And specifically, your question talks about embassy. Now, let me tell you something. For example, recently, there was an express visa route that came out specifically for nigerians where you know when i say that canada visa takes about three to four months the express visa is uh, takes about two weeks and it has all that thing, not just english it has other things like the amount of money you have to put in your account to meet up with express visa you, that you should submit english test to meet up with express visa and other ridiculous requirements once you go through the express visa what is preventing you from st starting normal so if you have been following me and you started on time, you won't have problem. But if you are the type of person who will follow me but never implement my advice and you start your visa application a day before or two weeks before you are supposed to resume school, you're on your own. Go and do whatever you have to do to be able to meet up. All right? So when some people apply, they will tell them, do you want to go the express visa route? Which means, you, for you to go through the express visa route, you have to go and get a EATS, get plenty money in your account, get like all the other requirements for the express visa. So they will be mistaking it to be that they must need their uh, 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 English test for them to get visa. It's not true. Let me give you an example. I had one client currently who is in Canada. Her visa is out. When her visa was taking time and she was all G3, hey, 
So one day she had contacted the embassy. The embassy said, okay, do you want to go the express route? Go and submit your ETS. Go and get about $30,000 in your account. Blah, 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 blah. She came to me. She said, Dr. Linda, they said she got right here yet here. So I said, foolishness. Read the email that was given to you. Read it again. What is written there? Eh? And I said, your visa has already stayed three weeks. As of, three months. As of then, maybe one or two weeks, the visa will be out. You want to abandon what you did to go and do express. Okay. When you finish getting the English test, you will include in that application to go to the express. So hope when they ask you to put $30,000 in your account, you're also going to do that. Half information is worse than full information. Like, half information is worse than not even having information at all. Don't cram. Understand. When somebody told you, embassy said I should go and do it yet. Did you see the letter they sent to the person? Did you read it? Or you just took that thing they said, which is obviously out of context, and you run with it. Do you know if the person is applying for undergraduate program? The person may be applying for undergraduate program. You may be applying for postgraduate program. Are you people the same? Your scenario is not the same. Why do you want to? Is why do you want to take his and the thing that is worrying him and superimpose it on the thing that is worrying you? A good example is when you is like somebody will tell you i had this sickness i went to this hospital they gave me this drug you now you are sick instead of you to go to the hospital consult the doctor know the drug that work for you you just carry their medication and drink you may die you don't know i have seen somebody that that thing almost killed because that particular drug for example happened to be a drug where they give it to you based on your body size the person that the, the the lady smallish in size was sorry the lady smallish in size went to go and take the same dosage for a man a full like a, a tall huge guy tall huge guy based on his body weight the doctor prescribed a drug for him right the same drug will work for the lady but not the same dosage because she's smallish she just went to go and carry the same dosage and drank. Her stomach almost torn into pieces. That is dangerous. Some let's say, think of it. If another guy, huge, go and copy that guy's own, it will work for him, right? But it didn't work for this lady. Almost killed the lady because of overdose. Because of the lady is different from that guy, All right? So your neighbor may be similar to you, but it doesn't mean your criteria is the same. That same neighbor you are talking to, let's give example. Like sometimes you think people look like you, but they are very different. Especially when you study abroad thing. That your neighbor may have gone to apply for a diploma program, even though he or she is a graduate. And he or she will get visa denial, by the way, along the line. You now, you, you apply for master's. You, embassy will not ask you to come and submit IETS because you are not going for undergraduate program. But what will happen? You go and copy your neighbor's thing. Your neighbor may be ready to do, go the extra mile to go for emergency visa. Express emergency visa, right? Two weeks is out for Canada. But they may have 30 million or 30,000 dollars to put in the account. You, you may not have that. You may have scholarship or with study loan or with some. Are you people the same? have money but not even up to that because it doesn't mean that you, you need thirty thousand dollars in your account to travel abroad right that's not that's not correct they just put it so that when they see those things they won't even need to even like check again they'll just be like okay be going you you can just you can just be going without us checking too much that's express visa does it mean like so far i have like only one or two clients have actually gone through that express visa me and my client go through the normal process. So you have to understand. I, 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 it's like I should drag my ears. Understand. Und don't cram. If you cram, you enter home. That person that is telling, hey, hey, they are saying, I put five million in my account. They still deny me. They say the money was, the money was not enough. Maybe the person was traveling by herself, her husband, and 10 kids. You, you are a single lady. What are you going to believe? The money you put there is not enough. By the way, if you have scholarship, you 
if you have school scholarship, you don't even need that because your school will give you the paper you use to do the to do proof of funds. But I'm just saying that these are different ways. You and I, your colleague at work may look alike. Both of you are women. She may be married, you are not. That already changes many things. She, you, you may be married, she's married. She may have three kids and you have one kid. That changes everything. She may be going for a fully funded scholarship. Or she may be paying for herself. You are going for a fully funded scholarship. That changes everything. She may be going for emergency visa. You are going for natural visa. That changes everything. So you people may look alike. But your situation is not always exactly the same. That is why Advantage Scholarship School will train you to know for yourself, to act from a place of knowledge, not from a place of then say, then say. If at this stage you are still acting from a place of then say, then say, shame on you. Shame. Shame, 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 shame. That means that instead of learning, you are doing then say, then say, where is he going to land you? Gotta. And you say you follow Dr. Linda. Sorry, you don't follow me. Then say, then say, should not be your 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 go to should not be your go to place of action when it comes to things that matter uh, you things that matter for your future you know okay i don't know how to say this because i see people make this mistake all the time i repeat you do not need IETS to success I, the only time i wrote IETS was when i was doing uh, citizenship one thing one thing I came to Canada full scholarship, masters, no IETS, PhD, no IETS. So what else do you need? Maybe you are looking for something else to to believe your belief is is okay for you. More questions. Uh, so I have Glo uh, Gloria saying, must someone evaluate results before getting admission in Canada? No. In fact, most schools we need you to apply with the results as it came from your school and many of them will not accept west evaluated or ece evaluated results if you want to travel abroad especially if you're coming to canada or even uk some schools in us may ask you for west or ece but that's just that's just like a tiny percentage if i'm in your shoes i will not go for west or ece evaluated results I will certainly do not need it to travel abroad. Most people use that as a way to be wasting their time. And they will stop, they will start working on what they should be working on. And they will start working on ECE or waste evaluation that they should not be working on. You see? Because they are trying to dodge the work. But they want to still be busy so that their mind will not pain them. How many questions left? Somebody, Solomon, I have my last question from Solomon. Last question that we'll be answering today. It says, when is the best time to relocate with your family? Your spouse, no children, your study abroad. When is the best time? The best time is now. I think I made a video about when is the best time to, um, when is the best time to relocate abroad? And, <laughs> and I explained why the best time is now. So, Solomon, the best time is now. When I, when I finish this live session, I'm going to go look for the video on the uh, why now is the best time to relocate abroad, and I'll share it with you on the comment section so that you know. <laughs> so I know there are other questions. I know there are so many other questions, but as I said before, I even started this uh, um, recording today. I said I was going to answer twenty, and we had people who joined me. Uh, we had people who joined me to do the counting. Specifically, I want to recognize the Sandra Chiwen. Thank you so much for counting with me to make sure that I answered at least 20 questions and they will all take a break. Thank you, Empress Dani. <laughs> who are those who counted? Please comment, comment, comment. I counted so that I can recognize you. Thank you, Empress Dani, for counting. Thank you, Victor Sh Shraibu. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining me to count. So, in total, uh, we, we, in total, we answered 20 burning questions. Uh, 20 burning questions. If I were you, I would, even if I came late, I would rewatch the video. So, 
for all those here who have questions there are other places where we have answered more questions all right there are other places where are you going to find it you can go to our youtube channel dr linda iheme tv dr linda iheme tv go to the youtube channel you are going to see hundreds of questions answered go to the video section you're going to see them we've answered many questions please almost every question that you have here i've answered them before in that and the video is on my youtube go to youtube watch free videos sleep there you know i have the, there are so many when how do you use proof of funds for scholarship how do you do this how do you do that it, provided is a study abroad question you're going to get the answer how do i travel with family what exactly do i need all right so as i said i answered 20 questions on this session and that is all for today go to youtube and if you have wanted migration client chat us inbox even if you are not wanted migration client chat us inbox if you still have a question that you will need us to ask, chat us inbox all right go to my youtube channel go to my i'll try and even some of the people that already have questions here i'm going to try to use uh, get a link that answer your question and use it as a reply watch the video but let most importantly let that video lead you to the youtube channel where you can go and see many more questions okay many more questions thank you my name is dr linda iheme i'm an educational consultant with vantage migration myself and my team we train people on how to secure admission scholarship study uh, study law any other thing they need to re successfully relocate abroad via the study abroad route whether you're going with your family or you're going alone or you have children whatever however you want to relocate you can do that through the study abroad route because it is the fastest easiest and shortest way to relocate abroad in the 21st century all right join the trend go to my youtube channel go to my youtube channel and get free videos that have answered all the questions that you have today and if you still have more questions after that chat us inbox all right love you